<clears throat> and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to endure forever and hold fast even now. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God asked, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding that, so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls, when he finds a pearl of great price. He goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus, it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. For part of my seminary education process, I went to the Gregorian University, which, of course, is run by the Jesuits. And it certainly is a place of higher learning and a place where the professors can many times be very challenging and difficult. Well, the university consisted of these two buildings. They were both uh, built separately. And the two separate buildings were connected about on the third level by this bridge. And in the first building, that's where we had the big halls where we took our classes. But then many of our exams were assigned to the building, the second building. And in order to get from the first building to the second building, you have to cross over this bridge. 
And because we were going to an exam, we like to call that the bridge of size. You never knew what was going to be facing you on the other side of that bridge in that exam. Well, you know, when I finished my course of studies, and it was pretty challenging getting that Jesuit education, I must say that I was not unhappy about completing that part of my seminary formation. But I must also admit that there were some really wonderful professors that we had. And what I learned from all of that is that at heart, I am definitely not a Jesuit professor. But when I returned to the States for ordination, the timing was such that I had to arrange within just a certain amount of time for the five-day retreat that is required of all men as they prepare for ordination to the priesthood. And as I looked around and called around, there was only one facility, one retreat center that could accommodate my retreat. And it was, of all places, a Jesuit retreat center, not too far from here, in Wernersville, Pennsylvania. And so with some of the experience I've had with the Jesuit professors, I must say that while I was happy to do a retreat, I went with a little bit of a chip on my shoulder, having to once again be with the Jesuits. But you know, those were five days of blissful, peaceful silence. And a great gift was that I met the spiritual director on that retreat, who would then continue the spiritual journey with me until his own death a few years after that. Father John Carboy. It was among the best experiences of my life. And so maybe while I'm not attracted to the Jesuit way of teaching, I certainly find great gifts in Jesuit spirituality. You know, I've shared with you that I have recently encountered a Jesuit who, in fact, is up for canonization. His cause to become a saint in the church has, been, has begun. His name is Walter Chizek, and he's from Shenandoah, Pennsylvania, and he's also buried in the cemetery at Wernersville. I'm currently reading the book that he wrote, He Leadeth Me, and it's about his reflections on what it meant to spend 23 years as a prisoner in the Soviet uh, camps, labor camps, in Siberia. Today we hear St. Paul writing to the Romans, brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God. Now one of the stories Father Chizek recounts in He Leadeth Me is his desire, along with a few of the other priests who were imprisoned, their desire to celebrate Mass whenever they could. And in order to do that, it had to be in secret. And he tells of how there were nuns who lived in the vicinity who knew that there were priests in the camps. And they had friends who worked as day laborers in the camps, such as the cooks, and they would arrange for their friends to smuggle in wine and bread and to hide them within the camp so that the priests had access to them and then could celebrate at some time, many times at midnight or even before the awakening alarm, their clandestine mass. And as I read about that and so many other horrible experiences that Father Chizek endured as that prisoner, I asked myself, how can I actually complain about anything in my life? But my friends, we all lead our lives, the lives that God has given us. 
here in this country during this time. And in our lives, I'm sure that we ask ourselves, as Father Chizek did many times, where is God? Oh, isn't it true that when wonderful things are happening, it's very easy for us to agree with St. Paul today when he says that all things work for good for those who love God. And by all things, he means everything. But what happens when we're experiencing pain, disappointment, fear, tragedy? Do we readily, as readily say, yes, all things work for good? For those who love God. You know, as Christians, we're taught to believe that God works in all things. And so what St. Paul is asking us to do is he's encouraging us in that letter to the Romans to look for God's presence in our daily lives. And when such things strike as tragedy or challenge, to look for how God wants to work in those times of difficulty. You see, St. Paul is not saying that all things are good, but what he is carefully weaving into the hearts of believers is the reality that God works in all things, that God works for good. God works for our good, and if we allow him to do so, God will transform that awful experience into something that is new, and something that when we reflect upon it in prayer, we realize that God certainly was leading us through it. And so we need to be patient, we need to have trust, or as St. Paul says, for those who love God, we need to have that love in our hearts no matter what for our God. Like King Solomon of our first reading, hopefully we're all praying for the gifts that God wants for us, and not what we think we need, but what God wants for us. For if we pray in that way, then we also are wise. When we are opening our hearts in love to God, it is then that we find that treasure, that pearl of great price. Father Chizek definitely found the treasure, the pearl of great price. And yes, in all things, especially his sufferings. And so we can ask ourselves, where is God offering this treasure in our lives today? And are we willing to invest ourselves in that treasure no matter what the experience when we find that treasure? And then, my friends, we're certainly not going over a bridge of size into whatever the experience is, but with God, we're going over a bridge of opportunity, a bridge of grace, a bridge of his presence, of being there with us in love. Now we profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, continuing to look to God's presence in our lives, we now offer these our prayers. Our response is, Lord, receive our prayer. That our church and her members may be a source of healing to the country's current civil strife, we pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. That nations may protect the most vulnerable during this pandemic and work together to find a cure for it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. That those who have been hurt by the leaders of the church may find the path toward healing and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. That all of the worries and prayers in our hearts and those offered on the live stream today may be offered to our Lord at this altar. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For our beloved departed, especially Jean McDonald, Anne Neely, Angela Fom, James Willis Jr., and for the special intention of this Mass today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. Lord God, we thank you so much for inviting us into your heart of love. And we ask that you receive these prayers and answer them if they be in accord with your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings 
which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. So that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who are with us from our parking lot, we invite you to make your way toward the front portico of the church, and Holy Communion will be available there momentarily. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <laughs> We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you so much for joining us here at this uh, for this live stream Mass. So good to pray with you. Uh, we remind you that for those who prefer an outdoor Mass, we now offer two opportunities over the course of the weekend. That is, it's Saturday at 4.15 
and then Sunday at 9.45 a.m. We ask you please to bring your own chair, wear a mask, um, practice social distancing. Feel free to bring an umbrella if it is a sunny day out. Um, it's a nice experience that we've had out there at our gazebo. We're also excited to uh, let you know that our new audiovisual equipment for live streaming in the church is installed and this week we'll be testing it. Hopefully we'll be able to live stream all of our masses and other events from the church um, in the very near future and we'll definitely keep you updated about that. And uh, finally, our seminarian who is here for the summer, Dan Kotzko. Uh, this is his last weekend. So we'll be sending him back to, first of all, his home to spend a few uh, free weeks um, at his home and then uh, on back to Mount St. Mary. We'll be sending our prayers with him. We wish him all the best and we certainly thank him for uh, what he had to offer us uh, this summer. Uh, if you haven't no uh, checked it yet, he does have a new video posted and he talks a bit about discernment toward the priesthood. So we invite you to take a look at that. We also have his address at the seminary in this week's bulletin. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.